Hello and welcome to a new episode of the CTO show with Mehmet. My name is Mehmet and in each episode, I discuss different topics from technology, of course, emerging tech, digital transformation, cybersecurity. And also, as you know, I talk a lot about startups and entrepreneurs. And recently, I'm trying to get the best guests to talk about each aspect of a startup and entrepreneurship in general. And today I'm very pleased to cover a topic that we didn't bring it before, which is marketing. And this is why I have today with me, Anne. Anne, thank you very much for joining me today on the show. Can you just tell us a little bit about more yourself and what you do and, you know, what are your areas of expertise? Sure. So my name is Anne. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, my pleasure. Yeah. I am the founder of Finn Marketing Management, which is a marketing consultancy geared towards early stage startups. I help with marketing messaging, strategy, and getting a good foundational base in place for success for your startup. So um, I hit the ground running early on with early stage startups. Um, I like to dive deep into messaging first because for me that is the actual base of all of the marketing activities you will do from from there on um you know you could have the best email campaign or the best paid strategy and if the messaging is flat or geared towards the wrong audience it's not going to be successful so messaging strategy are my sweet spots for sure that's great to have you on the show today and uh let's just start and dig into this topic. So uh, I get to know that you have you know, work in the corporate sector and then you have now your own uh, agency and you work with early stage startups. So can you highlight what are the major differences between marketing strategies for big names, big companies and the ones for startups and why it's important to have different thinking, I would say, or different strategies for startups uh, these days? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, the biggest difference between, you know, an established company and you know, marketing for a startup is that there's so many unknowns at a startup because it's new. Um, most of the things that you are going to be trying, you are trying for the first time. Now I'm talking, again, startups that have not been around for very long, you know, maybe they have 10 employees, six mm -hmm. employees. Um, so there's so many unknowns and so many variables. Um, and you need to be willing to change and pivot quickly. Where I would say at a more established company, you have some hopefully tried and true things that at least have worked in the past, some knowledge to base your decisions on, and are likely making more incremental changes to your plan rather than laying the groundwork for the first time. That's great to, to hear. Now, you mentioned something that they need to be flexible. They need to be agile. Now, one of the topics that always I hear from other founders, like we have limited resources. So, and, you know, of course, especially if they are bootstrapped, um, cost might be something that uh, can affect. So usually how you recommend the best strategy based, you know, on how much budget a startup has and, you know, does it make difference if, if you know, they are bootstrapped or if they are like uh, funded? How do you deal with this? You know, I think you have to look at what your goals are. Um, obviously, funding is, is an issue and resources is an issue, both from a monetary standpoint and also, you know, human capital standpoint. So you want to try to get the most bang for your buck. Um, again, going back to being flexible, sometimes you're not going to know what that is right away, right? You could ha make some good guesses as to where you think you should go first. You know, whether that, again, if you, if you have an email list, email's a great place to start, but maybe it's not going to be the most effective, right? Or if you're looking to fill your pipeline, maybe you start with a paid strategy. Uh, my point is that you need to be flexible and willing to try and fail to see, yes, are my resources allocated to the right spot? Um, you know, are we, are we seeing return on what we're spending? And is there still room left over to try um, and to try new things? I think one of the interesting things about, you know, 
being a, a head of marketing or a first hire at an early stage startup is that you're going to wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that I learned with that is, you know, there's really nothing outside the realm of your job at that point. Um, so you need to focus on what are the things that you're good at and where your expertise can be most effective and then rely a lot on contract help, fractional help where you can. Again, that's another great way to kind of get the most bang for your buck early on where you really likely can't hire more full-time help where you have to pay for benefits, et cetera. So um, yeah, flexibility is key. That's great insight. Now, you mentioned multiple times, you know, about the, I would say, strategies. One of them is email, content, you know. What, what do you see the most? And here, like, let's focus a little bit on tech startups mainly, like okay. to, to, to be more specific. What have you seen, you know, the majority of the time it's, yeah, like, of course, there is no one uh, formula that would work with every startup. But right. what would be, you know, usually from your experience, you know, the, the first thing that it should be tried, usually with tech startup, the first strategy, is it content? Is it email? What could it be? Um, I have seen, and this also, I, I hate to say like, it depends, but <laughs> um, having a good paid strategy is a good way to start filling the pipeline up. Now, you know, the story with paid though, is that you are reeling in potential customers that have already decided to buy. So this can be tough with an early stage startup that doesn't have a lot of awareness, but it is a good way to start building your list of names that you can then potentially market to. So, you know, I love email. I love webinars. Um, I definitely think content is important and all those are really good place to start and need to happen in conjunction with a paid strategy. Um, but those would be my, probably my, my go-tos for an early stage company that doesn't have a lot of names that they can already market to. Flip side of that, let's say you already have some good loyal customers, right? Mm -hmm. And you're having some good early success. Maybe it's even only a handful of customers. Skipping paid here, um, case studies, stories, testimonials, it's a really nice um, inexpensive way to start showing some credibility, showing that you have a real product, a real viable solution uh, that can help spread the word organically. So I, I will never say there's one, only one channel you need because you need many. Um, but that would be sort of my answer there, depending on what your scenario is. That's great. Uh, and like also, I hear a lot this okay, the company might have a very good product, an excellent product, but, you know, they show it in a very complex way uh, oh. and, and customers, they cannot understand it. Like what yeah. advices you can give here to, uh, to startup founders and, you know, if they have a marketing uh, agency working with or whether they are doing it themselves, what, what kind of, I would say, main points you'd focus on to make that, messaging much simpler? Yeah, that's a great question. You have to talk to your customers, have to, or prospects, right? If you are doing a demo of your product and people are not understanding what it does, why it's doing what it does, how it helps them, definite red flags. So my recommendation would be, whether you're working with an agency or not, customer interviews, prospect interviews, have them go through and say, where are you getting stuck? Where, why doesn't it make sense to you? You know, what, what pieces don't feel right? Um, you know, a lot of times a founder can come up with an amazing idea and it's a great product, but to your point, the messaging is coming across very technical or it's coming across confusing because that is, that's the language that they understand. It's the language that they work with but it may not be the language that your, the, the end user needs to hear. So having those conversations um, and digging into the pain points of those potential customers or current customers is key here to making sure that there's a good connection between the two. That's great. Now, I, I want to ask you just as your opinion, 
Um, and this is happening across, I would say, startups and even uh, established companies. We see that from marketing perspective, they try to jump on a one wagon, right? So, so let's say AI. So they just put too much AI. I've seen this also, like they put too much, I don't know, like if it's related to security, they just also jump on a hype and they try to show the product. From your opinion, like, is this strategy something healthy on the long run? Good question. <laughs> I have mixed feelings there, right? Because on one hand, I think it's not a terrible idea to, again, be flexible and be willing to try new things. But I also think even for early stage companies, it's important to have a plan, some kind of structured strategy that you want to stick to. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't, you know, vary from the plan or again, be flexible, try something new. But it does make me a little, um, it would make me concerned if every new thing that came your way as a company had to be tried immediately. Because to me, that's the recipe for not understanding what's effective, you know, not knowing what to do next. Um, so while I think some flexibility is key, too much is a, is a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a great answer, I would say, also as well. Um, now, again, because we are focusing on startups. Now, everyone has, uh, I would say, his or her saying, what should we prioritize first? So. Some people, they say we should prioritize the product first. Some people, they say, let's prioritize the sales first. For you, like, do you say, should I prioritize the marketing first? And how you see, you know, a good, I would say, sing and harmony between sales and marketing can give better results, especially for startups. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the first goal is to get customers. So... You know, wherever, whatever stage the product is in, you need to get it in front of people. So whether it's, you know, your neighbor next door, something to start getting some feedback and to get the word out. I mean, that's, this is a very early days. Um, you know, making sure you have some product market fit is, is really first. And you do that through customers. Um, for me, as a marketer, the next phase of that would be the messaging, right? If you have a product, you have, you know, you have some loyal customers or some customers, it's really time to think about what problem are we trying to solve with this product? And how do we get that word out effectively to let them know that, you know, we have a solution for you. Um, so that is why for me, the messaging piece is that is, is needs to happen pretty early on. Um, now, you asked an interesting question here about you know, the, the harmony between sales and marketing, for sure. You know, this is, I feel like can sometimes, and it's probably mentioned multiple places where there can be friction yeah. between sales and marketing. And I get it. I felt it myself. And it can be an issue, right? So I think a lot of times um, sales feels like marketing is out of touch, doesn't go fast enough, wants to create pretty things. And Marketing gets very attached to their content and, um, you know, wants to focus too much on message and doesn't really understand what the problems are. I mean, we could, we could go on and on here. The reality is, is that those two camps need to work together and come to some kind of um, compromise as to who's going to be accountable for what. Um, I think it's interesting, especially again, I mean, obviously I'm talking about early, early stage startups here, but mm -hmm. you have two things that need to be accomplished with marketing. You kind of have this internal sales support, and then you have the external promotion of the product. And that can be a tough battle uh, to figure out how much time needs to get spent on both because your sales team is going to need case studies, collateral, webinars set up. I mean, what, they're going to need things that are going to help them sell. And they need those things, right? For sure. Yeah. But yeah. the product needs to be promoted too. So you can't ignore your social media, your page, your email, those things happen mm -hmm. as well. So um, I think for me, where I've seen this, where I've seen sales and marketing work most effectively is when there's just really good, honest communication. And that's not always fun, comfortable conversation, but you know, like what's happening? What's a priority? What do we need to 
triage so that everyone is getting what they need. You know, marketing is, is hitting their goals, sales are hitting their goals, and we're working in unison. That's great insight. So continuing on this, like, what are the main um, misconceptions that you have seen founders they have about marketing and what you advise fellow startup founders to, to avoid? Well, <laughs> um, you know, one of the things, oh, there's a couple things. One is actually kind of a vernacular or a just a um, what different pieces of marketing actually do. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll get often see a lot of founders be confused about the difference between paid search and SEO. So not the same things, right? So there right. can just be having a conversation about tactics can sometimes get confusing with founders because quite frankly, it's not necessarily their job to know what all the different tactics do. It, as a marketer, it's your job to make sure you are explaining the strategy and the rationale behind the strategy. But that can be a point of friction for sure if they don't understand exactly what's happening and they want to know. I think the other thing is that there can be a misconception that marketing is sort of a, a miracle for the business. And um, it's not. Um, <laughs> you know, I, yes, marketing can do amazing things, but if there is not a good product, if internal systems are not in place to help support the business as a whole, marketing can only bring it so far. So I think that's another um, kind of common misconception that it, it does not fix all the problems of the business. It can help with a lot, but it doesn't solve all of them. Yeah, great insight also. Now, um, you, you mentioned a couple of, I would say, methodologies or strategies. So um, social media, right? Um, what is your take on it? Because I speak to some founders sometimes and they are very cold for it. You know, they said, Mm, no, some of them, they said, so is it like depends on, and when I say social media, of course, like it would depend if it's a B2B product or B2C product, right? So uh, like, again, here, what, what's usually the, um, I mean, the successful, I would say strategies that you see uh, goes well when it comes to social media? I think, so you already nailed part one of this, which is, is it a B2B company or B2C? Because mm. for sure, I've seen very different results depending on, you know, whether or not it's, we're, you know, marketing to other, um, to other companies. Um, I think that organic social definitely has an important place in this world, right? I, I'm thinking about, you know, I have one client in mind right now where um, LinkedIn in particular we've seen a massive increase in engagement, mm -hmm. comments, followers. And the interesting piece about that for me is it's very likely that LinkedIn there is great for investors and for to make sure investors can see what's happening with your company. So if you're looking for more funding down the line, that's a, just a great place to kind of keep the ball rolling and like, hey, here's what we're doing. Here's where we are. Here's what's going on. So. I'm not necessarily looking to generate leads there. In fact, very rarely am I looking to generate leads through organic social strategy for B2B. Um, it is really more about awareness and engagement um, and showing some authority. Uh, you know, we were we talked, you know, a bit ago about, you know, where can we start? And you mentioned yep. con content. And, you know, thought leadership and founder, um, founder brand strategy is actually very big and important right now. So social media can be a really great platform to highlight some of that and show that thought leadership for your company, for your founder brand, whichever. Um, on the B2C side, you have just a lot more flexibility to, there I would be looking for some lead gen, right? And, you know, run contests, have more to meet, have more fun, uh, to me, it's yeah. a very different vibe than it is when you're doing B2B um, social. But I, I do think it has its place and I, I don't think it can be ignored. I also think you need to manage your expectations and the founder's expectations about what is going to be produced through social. But I, I don't think it needs to be uh, hidden away in the dark and never looked at again. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, yeah, I would take your the small uh, 
uh, input on this from personal perspective, what I believe, um, what uh, socialism, you know, people, they think, okay, whatever activity we do, we should get uh, some leads, right? For me, the way I look at it is if someone see your brand, whether you are a B2B or B2C, and for me, really, it doesn't make any difference because at the end of the day, some people, especially in the B2B space, they forget that the the person who gonna buy the product, he's a he's a guy that he go home and open his social media, and you know he he might find your brand on uh, I don't know on Instagram for example I don't know probably yep. yeah so 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 I <laughs> so I I, be, I believe in 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 this uh, and I'm doing it even now with my own business as well so although like I target B two B I don't do B two C but what I do I said okay maybe someone he would see my brand he would remember oh I've I've seen this before like I. I encountered this before, so very good insight. Mm -hmm. Now, while I was doing my research, uh, and like, um, you are an expert in interactive media. Can you explain a little bit about this and how this plays a role in the modern marketing strategy? Sure, I do have a, a story here. So I did. I I I got my master's degree in interactive media, um, and at the time when I was there, it was things like. Um, app design, writing for the web, um, mm -hmm. ethics of the web, all that kind of thing. So for me, how that translated, I, I never, I knew that I didn't want to, wasn't probably going to make an app or anything like that, but it was mm -hmm. likely that I would be managing teams down the line that could be doing those things. It gave me really good exposure to design tools. Again, things that I would need to know for the modern, the, the modern marketer. I'm laughing because I've got this degree many, many years ago now, but um, for me, I mean, my, my gosh, all of marketing feels interactive right now. I think for them, it was primarily video, um, apps, things that move and can be adjusted yeah. on the web. Um, and I am thankful that I had that background, um, cause it gave me again, just a lot of good insight as to what was coming and how to hopefully sit in a room and have conversations with people that were, um, doing those jobs that's uh, you know good insight again to to hear from you now uh shifting a little bit gears i would say what are some of the marketing trends let's say you are seeing and where do you think especially now with ai you know we can create content using ai and all this yeah. where you are seeing things going and I'm not asking after a long time because with the age of AI, we don't ask after 10 years. We ask maybe after two or three years down the line, right? So yeah. what do you think? You know, the AI piece is fascinating, uh, terrifying, amazing. It's all of those things. And, you know, for myself, for my own business as a marketer, I, you know, my initial reaction was, Oh my, yeah, is this going to replace all marketing jobs, right? And I don't think that to be the case. Mm -hmm. I see marketing as a tool because the way that I've used it now, um, it's, it does not replace the thinking that's happening in my head. It doesn't replace the conversations that I have with clients, with colleagues. Uh, maybe it does down the line. I don't know. Um, but for me, it is, it's a good tool though to help focus those thoughts or optimize some of those things or get me answers to questions that I, I might have. And it's, I find it really helpful to use it that way. So I think in terms of trends, you're going to see more marketers find ways to utilize AI as a tool that helps them rather than hinders them. And um, I, I think that if you are unable to do that, you really will fall behind. Um, if you see it as something that's, you know, 100% bad or uh, the enemy, I, I, I think that that is the wrong approach here because there really are some true benefits uh, that are pretty unbelievable. You know, I'll, I will use it myself to help repurpose social mm -hmm. media content that I've created. So posts that I, think should have done better or did really well, but want to divide it into five or six posts. I will use AI for that. 
And again, it doesn't come back exactly right. And, you know, my understanding is that the more that I use it and it, it can learn my, my own brand voice. But the real point here is that I think we're going to see just AI being incorporated into the day to day. And then with that, maybe change and shifts in jobs, right? Maybe the, whatever the traditional marketers that we have now, maybe those roles won't exist, but there will be new ones that help monitor AI or I don't know, right? Run different yeah. things. Uh, but I, I, I think AI is here to stay um, and we need to be friends with it. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, maybe we repeated this on on this show multiple times. AI augment, you know, our capabilities. Yeah. And I agree with you. Like maybe people who are responsible for content today would be responsible later in moderating, as you said. Or maybe like it's actually forcing us to become more creative. I would say. Yeah. Uh, because and honestly speaking, especially when it comes to marketing and like you know like every founder every uh you know someone in business they get hundreds maybe thousands of of marketing messages daily and they they see so actually i'm seeing it in the positive side because already it was a hard task to get to someone yeah now it would be it would be more fil like a better filtration i would say so the ai would, would really get us you know to whom should we target you know I think if we'd use it this way, marketing would make more sense for a lot of founders. Now, before we close, Anne, um, just want to ask you, because like you, I know that majority of the time you work with fintech companies, right? Yeah. Um, majority of the time. But like, of course, you have exposure to see a lot of other, uh, I would say, trends in the market. So what are the hot things you are seeing currently, other than AI, of course? <laughs> yeah. I mean... Obviously, video and podcasts are still huge. Um, and being able to chop those videos down into small, um, into small pieces, digestible pieces, that's not going anywhere. Um, you know, people like to digest their content that way. So to me, that's not necessarily a new trend, but I don't think that it's going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so making sure that you are able to incorporate some tiny bits a video, podcasting, any kind of, of content that could, can be consumed that way into your strategy is, is going to be huge for sure. Good to know. Um, I have a final question I'm now making as a tradition. What is the question you wish that I asked you? <laughs> and you can Ooh. answer that question. Um, let's see here. Uh, how did I get my start in marketing? <laughs> I was trying to ask it, but okay. I thought, okay. yeah, please. Yeah, tell us. How did you start with marketing? I actually started in market research. And mm -hmm. I worked for a large um, global market research company. And um, I loved it. I have a curious brain. And so kind of being behind the scenes, and seeing, learning about consumer insights and seeing how um, consumers responded to advertising or certain brands was fascinating to me. And that sort of just trickled into, eventually it, it took about, I was there for uh, almost nine years, I believe. And it made me want to change over to the other side where I got to actually promote these brands. But it gave me a really interesting background as I started, you know, marketing for companies and, and uh, you know, marketing for clients, just to think like in the back of my mind all the time was like, how do people respond? Why do they do the things that they do? And to keep that in mind as I, as I build my own campaign. So that's how I got started. Ah, that's a good uh, story. And, you know, it's really needs curiosity because you create something, I mean, a marketing material and you don't know how people would, uh, would react to it. So, yeah, it's right. like exciting. It's an exciting one. Yeah. Great. Like, uh, thank you very much, Anne. I think you provided a lot of good insights for startup founders and people in tech in general also to understand more about, you know, early stage marketing. Um, what I would do also, if anyone wants to reach out to you, so I will share your website also as Good well in the, in the episode description so they can, um, you know, get in touch with you. This okay. I think I do all the time. 
And as we come close to the end, as usual, I repeat this. If you have any question, maybe to Anne, you can reach out to her or you have a question to me. I'm always happy to, to answer you. You can reach out to me by email. I'm very active on LinkedIn and a little bit on Twitter. So keep in touch. If you are interested to be a guest, same as Anne today, don't hesitate also to reach out. We can discuss that. We can arrange for that. No issues at all. And if it's the first time you are watching us, don't forget to subscribe. And if you are listening on your favorite podcasting platform, same thing. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. We are trying to get the best content ever. And as usual, take care. And until we see you in the next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.